This is the plaintiff, Jeannie Yake. She says she was walking her little beagle schnauzer mix and the defendant's dog got loose and bit her Bailey on the butt. Bailey needed two surgeries. The defendant refuses to pay for the damage she caused. And she's suing her here and now for the $1,329.72 she's owed. This is the defendant, Rochelle. She says the plaintiff called animal control and lied to them, claiming her dog had multiple attacks. The plaintiff's a liar, and she doesn't trust her vet bills and thinks this woman is just looking for some kind of payday by filing this lawsuit. She's accused of causing insult to injury. All parties. Please raise your right hand. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Milley, I'm top presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Yana. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Yake, um, you are suing Ms. Rochelle for $1,329.72 that you say she owes you in vet bills plus interest because according to you, her dog attacked yours. Tell me what happened. So on February 1st, we were walking our dog down her street and they were on a leash, and uh, it was really snowy that day, and her dog was outside with her, I guess. I don't know, I don't know where her dog came from. I just saw the dog attack What kind of dog is your dog? My dog is a, is a mutt, she's a, a schnauzer beagle. And what kind of dog is your dog, Ms. Rochelle? A Rottweiler. Okay, so go on, Ms. Yake. Okay, so we were walking down the street, and um, her dog came out from her house and bit my dog on the butt. My husband was walking that dog. I had the other dog. And so Chris grabbed the dog, and her dog still had Bailey's butt in his mouth. In the midst of all that, Chris got bit on the lip by my dog, Bailey, and it just, it was, it was just horrifying. So we started back down to our, I told her, I said, I will contact you if I have to go to the vet. My husband was screaming at her and what was your husband said, saying? Down. We got to get, he called her a lot of names because he's never been attacked by a dog before. Um, it was really scary. I've I, never. Right. But I'm he, he called her, he years. called her what names? He called her, uh, he called her, uh, he probably called her. Really? Um, okay. That's kind of well, rare. I mean, I, people get upset and they say, why isn't your dog on a he, leash? They don't say. All right, but anyway, go ahead. So go on. Well, he said he probably said something like, "Why is your dog on a leash?" Okay. I don't. I don't remember. All right. Okay. Really okay. Scary. okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So anyway, go on. So we get back to my house, and we had to. I took care of his lip first because, like I said, he got bitten on the lip a little bit. Uh, once we realized that he didn't have to go to the hospital, I found Bailey about 20 minutes later under the bed, and I noticed she had puncture wounds. She had a rough coat. So you couldn't really see it very well, but I could see that she was bleeding. So we went to the emergency vet that night, that day. It took us about four hours into that. Did you two know each other um, before this? Like, are you neighbors uh, or it's just on the path that you walk your dog? No, I've seen her in the neighborhood, but I don't know her. Okay. So we, uh, we get to the emergency vet. We were there for about four hours and they said that um, they didn't have to do any surgery or anything that day, that it was... Um, that the, the wound should just drain and she, as long as, you know, we kept cleaning them, it should be fine. Okay. Which is what we did. So, um, on the 17th of February, I came home from work and I noticed that, well, before that, I had noticed that the skin between the punch wounds was Wait, kind of hard. Uh, let me ask you what happens when, when the defendant calls you, she says what? She's oh. contrite, right? She was, she was a you know, like, uh, how's the dog doing? Are you okay? And you know, I was like, uh, yeah. I said, I, you know, I'm just getting her now. And I was, you know, I said, I know it was an accident, but, you know, I'll talk to you tomorrow about the bill. And and what know, happened just, with that? That initial help. bill was $425.31. And who paid that bill? Michelle, I paid it initially, and then she paid me back. She then loaned me the money the next day. The next day, the day and after the attack. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, now, Ms. Rochelle, why was your Rottweiler, because it's always a Rottweiler or a pit bull, uh, why was your Rottweiler not on a leash outside? So, February 1st was a snowstorm. Um, I was stuck between studying and snow plowing. 
Um, he wasn't outside. I wasn't even outside. Um, I was actually warming up the cars and I went back inside to study a little bit. Okay. Um, I didn't think that during a snowstorm, somebody would be walking their dog. Um, my route, I know big dogs tend to have, a uh, la fama, the fame of, of being aggressive, but oh, he really is but, not. But let me tell you, I don't hold anything against the Rottweilers or the Pitbulls. That's their nature. Oh, it's the people. Right. It's the people. Right. It's the people. So, Absolutely. so, uh, all right. So you don't believe she should be walking her dog in a snowstorm. So what your doors were unlocked or you left your door open or you were, were coming open. in and out. Were what open. are you saying? Okay. All right. They were open. Um, but I had right again, my dog is, has never been aggressive. I didn't think that anybody would be walking during a snowstorm. So I had my back to the door while I was studying and, um, all of a sudden I hear him bolt out the front door. I didn't know what was going on. So I ran after him barefoot and he's going after this dog. Um, I separate them. Mr. Yake is yelling at me. What was he saying I, to you? Uh, that I was a f and that um, he was gonna sue me and that um, he was just repeating that a lot. Um, so I- How was Ms. Y Mrs. Yake? She was very calm. Uh, I was apologetic. Is, it, is in that, that the Rottweiler? No. Oh, no. okay. Go ahead. I have two dogs. Okay. Um, I was. She was. I was apologetic. She was very understanding. I told her to keep in contact because we had seen each other throughout the neighborhood. Okay. Um, All right. So everything's happening the way it should, except that you didn't have your dog on a leash and your dog was able to run out because your door was open because people still have a right to walk a dog in a snowstorm. Uh, you may not think they're gonna, but I may not be walking my dog. I may just be walking in my car and I get bit. You don't know. So we really don't have. And I know you think, oh, but my dog would never bite a, a person. But you didn't think your dog would bite a dog. Right. So th you don't get to have that. The, the rule is a blanket rule for everybody at all times. So but she does what the right thing is, which is pay the bill. But then there's a complication. So let's talk about the complication, yes. Ms. Yake, and what happens with Bailey. So on the 17th of February, I came home from work and I noticed that, like I said, the skin between the puncture wounds had started to harden a bit. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a vet. So the next day I called my vet. So um, Dr. Heidinger told me that the skin had actually gone necrotic because of the pressure of the bite. It was the bruising in between the puncture wounds that died, the skin died. She then had to have what's called the Breimann surgery, which is when they had to cut the dead skin away. It was an open wound for seven days. And then we went back and she had a second surgery to close that wound and she had probably about 20 stitches that went straight down vertically. Ugh. And after that, the wound was it healed. Okay. And How is Bailey doing scar. now? She's fine. She's fine okay. now. So she has a horrible scar, but the hair is growing back and it'll go away soon. So, But when I did contact the defendant, I told her the day that I found out that the surgery was going to be needed. Uh, she did not get back to Oy. me. That was the day of the accident. That was oh, the day when I went I'm sure there's a lampshade on the poor dog's head. Oh, yeah. She had a colon on for about six or six weeks. That was about a day late. That was the next day. Yeah. And that darkness in between the puncture wounds is what died. Oh. That's the... Gosh, you got feeling. a picture of Bailey without the wounds? Oh, look at that. I do. Yeah, no, I can see. What is this a picture of? Oh, that's Michelle walking her dog on May 7th. That's her other dog that she doesn't have on a leash. Are you serious, Rochelle? Right across the street from my house. Yeah. Yes. You paraded with a dog not on a leash right in front of the house of the people whose dog your other dog not on a leash attacked? That doesn't sound very smart of you. Maybe you should have your dogs on a leash like everybody. Oh, the dog's so harmless. You know, no, it's, you don't get to decide. In, that the in all don't honesty, apply Your anymore. Honor. How are you walking no, a dog in, in, without a leash there? Yeah, in all honesty, um, I never take my Rottweiler. It doesn't out. matter. Any dog, not, it doesn't, you don't get to be the decider of whether the law applies to you. There is literally, I've never seen this in my 20 something years of sitting on the people's court. I have never seen 
someone who is accused of, of their dog escaping, walking their dog without a leash. I have seen pictures of the dogs loose again. But I've never seen someone walk in front of the house of the aggrieved party, walking their dog literally without a leash like that. Like, like there's no question, you know, here, the other cases, all <laughs> oh, the dog got out again. Well, that's bad. But here you're de- you're actually doing it again. No, this is a different. I dog. know it's a different dog. I know what a Rottweiler looks like. <laughs> it's not the point. I mean, no, I you mean what? It's my personal choice of, no, of it's not, not having babe. my dogs on no, a leash. No, it's not your personal choice. It's the law. You don't get a personal choice. We all give up some rights as a civilized society in order to get the benefits of living in society, okay? So no, it is not your personal choice about whether you wanna walk your dog without a leash. Where did you get that? Do you seriously not know that there's a leash law in your town? Do you not know that? Please say you didn't know. Because if you're just a jerk who decides that it's your choice whether or not your dogs roam free, then... It's my personal belief system. Yeah, but you don't get to do your personal belief system. Do you have a driver's license? I do. Okay, why did you get a driver's license? To be an independent civilian. Well, why didn't you just drive without a driver's license? Right, there's some rules we all have to follow and you're not special, Rochelle. Now let's talk about what happens. This 400 and something dollars gets paid, but then there's an additional $1,280.35 for the two surgeries that the dog had to have. And Rochelle, you felt that that was excessive and probably not related or you didn't trust her because according to you, she had lied to animal control. Tell me about that. The animal control officer, he let me know that the yakes were expressing fear of my block, Um, understandably so, but you know, I believe that if the fear had been there immediately after the incident or as a result of the incident, that it would have been expressed immediately after. And she didn't, that night we spoke, she was understanding, she was uh, very calm. Um, Then all of a sudden the next day when she was handing me the bill, she started expressing concern and, oh, you know, now we're afraid, now we can't walk on the street anymore. Um, And she said, the animal control officer, he, um, would tell me that she started expressing concern about, you know, what are the next steps that they can take legally and what can be done. Um, he was said he was quick in telling them that they had no legal case. Um, it, I guess it sort of seemed that they were seeking financial compensation for well, my dog do. They attacking absolutely their dog. have a legal case. That is not true what you just I'm sorry? said. They absolutely have a legal case. That is not true I'm what you just I'm just reiterating what the, no, what you're the not, officer told me. Because your answer to the complaint is a little different. That he said they were going to sue for pain and suffering. And that the animal control officer explained to him there's no pain and suffering. That's true. Isn't that what happened? Wasn't that the discussion with the animal control officer about right. pain and suffering? Right. That's different from whether they have a legal case for actual damages. Pain and suffering is I want you to pay me five thousand dollars because I'm suffering. That's different from, hey, I'm out twelve hundred and something additional dollars. So I don't want to be out. That's like a different case. So, yes, they have a legal case, but people do not have legal cases for pain and suffering in a dog bite. So now when they tell you about the additional what what else did the animal control officer tell tell you she had said or they had said? He read to me the the complaint that they had uh, given and um, said that my dog had had multiple other incidents. Um, we had never had an incident. We This is the first incident. Um, did you, Ms. So Yake, ever, did you or your, give me a second, did you, Ms. Yake, or your husband ever tell the animal control officer that the, uh, that her animal had had other incidents? Other neighbors told me that they had problems with her dog. Okay. Because, All right. So, so Ms. Ms. Rochelle, at doing. that point, you feel that she's dishonest and she tells you about the two surgeries. Do you ask for the name of the vet so that you can call and find out whether it, the surgeries actually happened or she's just lying or whether it's unrelated or do you ever ask for the name of the vet? I she gave me the statements with the name of the vet. I never called. So um, what did you so why didn't you pay the rest of the bills? Um. I didn't believe that she was doing her part in taking care of the dog because of the way that she was acting with 
animal control. Okay, um, I get that. I don't. I, I I don't begrudge you suspicion. I wake up suspicious, so I get that. But all you have to do to find out what the right thing for you to do is, instead of what you want to do, is pick up the phone and call the vet and say. Are you sure that this is related to the bite wound? Might this be because of negligent care on their part? Um, and are, are there really these two other bills? Because there is none so blind as she who will not see. So I have looked at these bills. These are absolutely your fault. There is a letter by the vet that says that the necrotic skin Due to the violent nature of the attack on Bailey by another dog, the blood supply to the area was injured. The tissue between the wounds was devitalized and dying. The wound area needed to be debrided. This happens with regularity. I've heard of this before a million times. So the dog, I mean, never mind the fact that she's got to care for the dog day after day with all of this and, you know, what you pounce on her. But but what you do is, hey, it's my personal choice if I feel like uh, corralling my animals or not. And not only that, you're, you won't pick up the phone, call the vet and find out. And uh, you accuse her of negligence to add insult to injury. Seriously. Do you have any idea how bad you look right now? Yeah, I'm talking to you, Ms. Rochelle. Come on, man. $1,329.72, which is the figure with the interest charges because she had to pay for it on a credit card. I've gone over the figures. That is correct. And I'm ordering the defendant to pay her that money. Thank you. Ms. Michelle, let me ask you how you feel about this. The judge kind of lit into you uh, a number of times. Uh, what are you thinking right now? I mean, she's right. I had it coming. I should have been more careful, but it is what it is. At least it's over with. Yeah, but you you did have it coming, no question. I got to ask you, are you going to walk your dogs off the leash or do you think you're going <laughs> to at least keep them on a leash? It's incredible. You no, that. my dog, my dog's not danger. I don't I, I have good control over her. I don't I'm not worried about anything. You're not going to put her on a leash? No, that's my personal choice. Seriously? And yeah, seriously. Oh, boy, boy. The judge really went after you after that. It was a leash law. You got to follow it. And you say it's your personal opinion. You don't want to do it. Yeah, I don't want to have that sort of control over my animal. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you're too much. All right, well, you gotta pay the money, like it or not, you've gotta pay that $1,329. Let's see what Ms. Yake feels about this. Uh, Ms. Yake, how are you? I'm thrilled to have my money back and my dog is fine. So it's, it's, it stinks not being able to walk down that street anymore. Um, but with her attitude, apparently I can't go down that street ever again because if she's so cavalier, how can I be sure that she's not going to leave that dog out again? And this, would ha this could happen again. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, congratulations. Good for you. You prevailed and you Thank got you. what you're seeking and what you needed. Absolutely. All right. Harvey, this is an amazing case. What do you think of that defendant? Doug, where to begin? This woman should not own dogs, period. She's being ridiculous. And hopefully animal control will get involved and take her dog away because she's a bad dog owner if she's doing this, especially since her dog already bit somebody, bit a dog. So this woman is irresponsible. And I'm telling you, if, if this dog bites another person or another dog, then this owner is going to be responsible not just for medical bills, but possibly for punitive damages as well. I'm in Minnesota and our new landlord is charging every tenant $11 a month for pest control. Can they do that? Well, the fact that she calls him a new landlord means that maybe someone just came in in the middle of leases. Right. Could be. Because the, the dispositive answer will be in the lease. Does the lease say, and I will pay $11 for, right. because if it's not in there, then no, he can't charge it. If it is in there, it's game over. Game He's over. Because you could, yes, he can make right. you pay whatever he wants if you sign the lease and say, yeah, I'm willing to do it. That, that's, Frankly, 11 know. bucks a month per tenant might not be unreasonable for pest control. But most know. landlords just pay for that themselves. 
themselves as right. part of the uh, right. uh, providing a habitable environment to make sure there's right. no pests. Yeah. Sure, every every landlord has to provide a safe, habitable place. Right. Yeah, but if if the, if it's a new landlord, all of a sudden doing it, my my gut is that it's not in the lease, and that they just said, "Hey, right. I know, I'll be. just uh, absorb the, hurt. I'll, I'll spread the hurt, and no one's going to complain about eleven dollars right. because um, they'll want a new lease." Right. Right. Well, ants and roaches get in everywhere. Yeah. I mean, in Florida, they we, we like to call them palmetto bugs, the big roaches. When the they, ones you saddle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can saddle up, and uh, that's part of that's one of my duties. Uh, yeah. Disposal of those. Yes. And, that's why I keep you around.